Hi, my name is Nelson Campbell. Our presentation today is sponsored by the nonprofit Plant Pure Communities. Thank you for joining our show today. We're going to address a vitally important idea, and it's also an idea that might bring a little light into your day, which is something we all could use. I've invited my father, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, to join me from his home in upstate New York. Known by millions around the world, he did much of the research to validate the health benefits of a plant-based diet. Welcome, Dad. Yes, yeah, good to be here. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Many people are saying we have two strategies for dealing with this pandemic, testing and social distancing. Both are important ideas. But you say there's a third. What is that? It's the food we eat and the nutrition that is produced from that food. So that's an idea, this connection between uh, this virus and food, that's a connection that's backed up by the statistics. As you and I have discussed, many of the fatalities have been people who unfortunately suffered from previous medical conditions. 99% uh, in Italy, according to a study by the country's National Health Authority. And of course, we're seeing a similar situation here in our own country. So let's go a little deeper into this connection between nutrition and chronic disease. In the 1970s and 80s, you did some pioneering research in the lab. Could you summarize that research for us? Yes, it started in the Philippines when we were promoting the consumption of uh, protein, especially uh, good quality animal-based protein. Uh, that then led to an observation that was rather strange, namely, it seemed to be associated with the formation of a certain kind of cancer. I came back to the lab, did that work in the lab, and we learned indeed that when animal protein, for example, is increased in the studies that we were doing, it increased the formation of the cancer. Uh, either we could turn cancer on and off, increase the protein, more cancer, decrease it, less cancer, or decrease it by uh, replacing it with plant-based protein. So it was a very provocative kind of observation that the animal protein had this much effect. So in the laboratory, you were seeing a connection between diet and cancer. Um, and you suspected that this might be a broad-based uh, connection of diet to a variety of chronic diseases. And then you had an opportunity to confirm that idea. Um, and what became eventually the most comprehensive human study of diet and disease ever done. Can you give us a quick summary of what you learned about chronic diseases and nutrition in your groundbreaking China study? Well, basically, uh, my thoughts went beyond the protein itself, the effect it has on cancer. It also has an effect on other diseases. But more than that, there's a whole variety of other nutrients that are also operating at the same time. And what we learned was that a whole food, plant-based diet, this containing, quite frankly, no animal protein, that that kind of diet actually repressed the conditions that would lead to a variety of so-called Western diseases, including cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, and so forth. So this is actually what you're best known for around the world is your research into the connection of diet to chronic disease. But many people don't know that you also looked at the connection of diet to viral infection. And in fact, in the lab, you saw a possible connection of diet to the activity of the hepatitis B virus. But it was in China where you saw the most compelling data. What did you see in China? What we saw was that as uh, the consumption of plant-based foods, vegetables, fruits, and grains, and so forth, as that increases in the diet, it tends to actually uh, increase the amount of the virus being inactivated by the formation of antibodies. So you actually measured some of these things uh, in, in your surveys in China, is that correct? Yes, we measured both the antigen, which means active virus. We also measured the antibodies to the virus, which is essentially is the inactive form. So you measured the levels of the antibody to the hepatitis B virus, and you also measured uh, the active form of the hepatitis B virus, the antigen. And did you see a relationship between those levels and uh, how many uh, plant foods that people were consuming? Yes, the greater were the proportion of people with more antibody 
they were the people who have, were consuming more plant-based foods. So what about uh, the, the active form of the virus, the antigen? Did they also have uh, less of the active form of the virus? There was a high correlation between plant-based food consumption and the formation of antibodies. The greater was the consumption of animal-based foods, the greater there was of the antigen, that's the active form of the virus. Wow, that's an amazing finding. So if you had to summarize all of this research and what it means for our viewers, uh, what, what would you say? How would you succinctly summarize that for people today who are concerned about the COVID-19 virus? There's two parts to that question. First off, the whole food plant-based diet, rich in antioxidants and fiber and all the good things that we know about plants, the greater the consumption of that kind of food, the lower is the risk for the chronic degenerative diseases, which actually predispose people to the COVID-19 virus. At the same time, that diet rich in the plant-based foods, fiber, antioxidants, and so forth, also seems to have the capability of converting an active virus to an inactive virus. So thereby boosting our immunity. You know, it kind of makes intuitive sense. And you, and you always take, take these ideas back to their core, back to their roots when you talk about nature and you, you, you talk about looking at things holistically. Conventionally, in nutrition research, we tend to study the role of nutrition nutrient by nutrient by nutrient, maybe on specific diseases. But in reality, that's not the way that nutrition works from our own research. Nutrition is a very powerful instrument to actually affect a wide variety of illnesses and diseases involving a wide variety of substances in food, or what we call them nutrients. And so it works in a, in, a, in a context that I like to refer to as holism. It all works together. That's an expression of nature. And I would find it really difficult to understand how nature in the one case would prevent chronic degen degenerative diseases, on the other case, allowing viral diseases to form in the meanwhile. It turns out the kind of nutrition I'm describing from a whole food, plant-based diet is very comprehensive and I'm going to suggest with a lot of evidence that it controls viral initiated diseases as well as the chronic degenerative diseases at the same time. So in other words, what's good for us is good for us in every way. See, I find this a very empowering and hopeful idea that we actually have that kind of ability to take charge of our health. I think what makes this kind of pandemic so difficult for a lot of people is just the uncertainty of it, the sense that we have no control, that all these forces are acting on us and we have no control. But what you're saying is that actually we do have quite a bit of con control. And by the way, I know that you're not saying that if you eat plants, you won't get infected by the coronavirus. You know, what you're saying is that, you know, if we get infected by the coronavirus, that eating a healthy diet will minimize the risk that that infection progresses to a serious state. Is that right? You said it better right. than I could. That's perfect. So uh, before we finish off here, I'd like to give you a chance to say whatever else you want to say. Yeah, I'd like to suggest for people, since they apparently now we have some time to think about this and to do something about it, that people just basically become acquainted with this kind of nutrition, this kind of food. And in the process, learn how to cook it, prepare it, or obtain the food in some way that they can uh, benefit from the use of a whole food plant-based diet. I find this whole idea is based on a kind of nutrition that has to be interpreted more holistically, I like to say. Uh, and it really is a very powerful effect on a wide variety of conditions that we sometimes suffer. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dad, for again, for taking the time to share this important message with us today. Thank you. Before we end today's show, I'd like to let you, the viewers, know that we'll be launching a global effort to communicate the vitally important message you just heard. You'll be able to participate in this. So we encourage you to sign up at plantpurecommunities.org so that we can provide further details to you when they're available. You'll also be able to access an article that my father wrote on the topic of today's discussion. Again, the website address 
is plantpurecommunities.org. Thank you again for joining us.